This company closed over $7 million in sales in just one day at a large in-person event. And they did this by trading their old sales document for a brand new form that automatically generates sales contracts, loan agreements, and even collects payments. And all of this without having to do any manual work at all. And in this video, I'm going to break down how we design this automation to inspire you to hopefully do the same um, kind of setup for your business. But first, let me give you some context. So our clients, the Scheduling Institute, sell high-ticket coaching programs at large in-person events. Most of their programs have a six-figure price tag, and so for that reason, they offer their customers to finance their purchase. And because of that financing element, the sales documents were rarely completed correctly from the first time. Typically, the business had to follow up with their clients to collect information, collect payments, and maybe sometimes even losing the sale because the momentum was gone. The customer was no longer excited about buying the product. And so Avid, the chief of staff at the Scheduling Institute, wanted to streamline the sign-up process so that clients could sign all the forms while being physically present at the event. So her goal was to provide a great experience to clients and automate as much admin work as possible to get everything done while the client was there. Initially, Avid wanted to use DocuSign, but as it turned out, we ended up using JobForm. As we always do with all our clients, before building anything, our first step is to analyze the workflow and the structure of the document so that we can define the best software to use. And if we haven't met before, my name is Sofian Saudi. Hello, I'm the founder of Solisan Consulting. Since 2019, we've been helping thousands of companies automate their sales, onboarding, and other important document workflows using electronic signatures, forms, and integrations. So if your business could use some help to streamline document workflows, you'll find the link in the description of this video to schedule a consultation with one of our automation consultants. And all the links are the thing that I mentioned throughout this video. You can also find them in the description just down below. Now, back to the way that we've approached the situation. After drawing all the different purchase and payment options that clients could choose from, we looked at each document to understand how we could automate them. The first document was this PDF. It's just a document that explains clients what they can purchase. Nothing complicated here. Then there was the disenrollment application. Here is where things got a little bit more complicated because clients had the option to pay in full finance some of the membership or finance part of the membership. There were also some add-ons that a client could add to their purchase. And depending on what they chose, the interest rate, should there be financing, varied as well. So even though it looked simple, it's actually not. Then we had the credit application. This is just a standard form where clients provide basic information about themselves and their business. Nothing complicated here at all. But then there was the promissory note. The promissory note needed to include basic information, such as the name of the borrower, their address, but also some more complex information that we needed to calculate, like the monthly repayment amount, the interest rate, the finance amount. Once we understood how all the numbers needed to be calculated, the second thing we had to think about was the document type. As you can see, this is a dynamic document because the variable information that's here or here or here is located between static text. This is static. This is variable. This is static. And so that means that the document needs to be mail merged as opposed to just filled out like a static form where you have clearly defined locations for the data that's variable. Let me show you what I mean. So on this application here, we have a lot of space to insert our variable information. But on this document, it's different. We don't have a dedicated box to enter the information. Now let's move on to the direct debit authorization form. This form is pretty simple, but it should only be completed by clients who are located in the United States. For clients who aren't in the US, this form should not be visible or completed. After we understood how all the documents worked, our next step was to design the architecture of the automation. And so instead of using DocuSign, we proposed having to use JotForm. And the main reason for this is that DocuSign cannot do a mail merge on completion for the promissory note. A mail merge on completion is different from a mail merge before sending. So you've got two kinds of mail merge. A mail merge before sending is your typical mail merge scenario. You have your document template with placeholders like this one, and you want to replace the information in the placeholders with information you already have on file in an Excel spreadsheet, for example. So you create your mail merge, uh, before you send a document to whoever you want to send it to. A mail merge on completion, however, is when it's the signer that creates the mail merge. Of course, the signer is not aware that they are creating a mail merge because the only thing they're doing is typing information in a form. But then what's happening is that the form is sending the information into the document mail merge. And so the mail merge is created using information provided by the signer in the form. 
It sounds maybe a bit complicated or like a small detail, but we had to take this into account because DocuSign cannot create a mail merger completion. This means that we could not use DocuSign because of that promissory note structure. And so quick side note here, never ever pick a software before you understand how your workflow and document workflow works. Had we not gone through the initial analysis and simply followed our initial client's request, which was, hey guys, can you use DocuSign for this? We would have lost a lot of time. Process comes first, tech comes next. Don't choose the tech before you fully understand your process requirements, just saying. After we determined that JotForm was the way to go, uh, we built a form and is this what it looks like? That's the landing page of the form. And so here the clients can select which program they want to purchase and whether or not they want to finance the entire amount or a part of the amount. So if they want to add a deposit. So this is the equivalent of this. This is what we made simpler uh, with logic and fields and rules. Let's just select the, uh, I want to pay a, a deposit option. So I want to pay a deposit and finance part of the membership. The next thing that I can do is to choose when the loan should fund, depending on when I want to get started with a program. Loans can only fund on specific days of each month. And as you can see here, I can only choose specific days each month. And so there's always those four options, regardless of the month that I'm choosing. And JotForm also checks that the date chosen by the client is not in the past. This is something that is not possible uh, with DocuSign. So I can't select anything in July because we're the 25th of July as I'm recording this video. And so the next date available is the 1st of August. Then the client will select the payment method for the deposit. And so we're going to select credit card, for example. And then the deposit amount has a $10,000 minimum, but I can increase this value if I want to. I can say 11,000. And obviously this is going to be used in the calculation, right? Now, the next thing that I can do if I want, it's not a required field, is to choose when to run this deposit because maybe the client at the time of signing up doesn't have the full amount for the deposit available on their card. And so if I want to, I can just say, that I want the deposit to run, I don't know, in a couple of days. And here we've added some logic that checks that the date to process the deposit is not after date the loan should fund. For example, here the loan is supposed to be starting on the 1st of August. And if I try to select the 2nd of August, I'm getting this error message here that says to continue, the deposit must be on blah, blah, blah date. So the date the, date the deposit should run could be on the same day, but it cannot be after, which is completely logical. Not only we get an error message, but we also cannot click on next. There is no next button, which means the client cannot continue. We now have all the information that we need to create the rest of the flow. We have the price of the program, which is uh, hidden behind this dropdown here. We have the deposit amount that we are going to subtract from that uh, uh, program price. We also have the interest rate, which is determined on whether a deposit is entered or not. So if there is a deposit, it's a search certain rate. If there is no deposits, different rate, and we know when the loan should start. All of this means that we can use JotForm's formulas to calculate the monthly repayment with the interest rate. And so we can use all of this information to create our promissory note in the next few pages. The next thing the client can do is to choose when they want the payments to be drafted each month. And so this is how we uh, partially automated, uh, digitized this particular form here. But the reason we're not asking for the bank details just yet is because we don't know whether the customer is located in the US just yet. And as you might remember, this form is only required for non-US, for US-based clients. So next on this screen, we have the personal, inf personal and business information, which is the equivalent of this business credit application form. I'm going to fill this out quickly. And now, based on all the information that I've entered before in the form, JotForm created the promissory note and as you can see, the variable information has been replaced directly between the static text. We have the total purchase amount. We have it here again. We have the interest rates. We have the monthly repayment with interest rates. And we have all of the other information as well. And so this is our mail merge on completion. This thing that DocuSign doesn't do. I've just clicked next. And now I'm being asked to enter my credit card information because I selected that I was going to pay the, the deposit by credit card. And I'm going to click on pay. And because I've selected that I did not want my uh, card to run before X date, the money won't be taken out on the account until uh, the date that I chose. And so this is done with an integration with Stripe. And so I've now submitted the form and 
as the client, I've also received an email confirmation containing the PDF of all the information that I've submitted. Let me, and of course, the Scheduling Institute has also received the same PDF, and we've uploaded all of the information entered in the form, as well as the committed documents directly in their CRM, which is how nobody wasted any time on paperwork at all. If you think that your business can use some help to streamline document workflows, use the link in the description of this video to book a consultation with one of our automation consultants. I'll be releasing more content on how to use JotForm over the next few weeks. But for now, I'll leave you with a quick video that our clients recorded to share her impressions on the automation. Hi, my name is Avi Lajavardi. I am Chief of Staff at Scheduling Institute based in Atlanta, Georgia. So the problem that we had was the streamlining of a checkout process. Some of our programs are fairly expensive and require financing. And we had done things via paper format previously with lots of follow-up after sale. And we wanted to consolidate it and handle everything on site electronically while we had the client there in person at a large event. There were a lot of intricacies within our needs that Solusign was able to accommodate so that when the client was done at the event, we truly were, were done. I uh, really enjoyed working with the team. We were in different time zones, but very, very responsive, easy to work with. And I'd absolutely work with them again.